ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهد الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا وامامنا وقائدنا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح الامه وكشف الله بالغمه وتركنا على المحجه البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها الا هالك وبعد فان افضل الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه في دين الله بدعه وكل بدعه في دين الله ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اللهم اجرنا من النار. My brother and my sister Islam, I begin with the greeting of Islam. May the peace and the blessings and the mercy of Allah be upon you. I continue by testifying that none is worthy of worship except Allah. And by proclaiming that the beloved Muhammad is the final messenger and a servant of Allah. Whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, none can misguide. And whomever is allowed to go astray due to their own wrongful actions, sinful desires and inclinations, none can guide back except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and my sisters, we are in the best days of the year. We are in the best days of the year, the days of the Hijjah. The best nights of the year are the nights of Ramadan, the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And the best days of the, of the year are the days of the Hijjah. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu says in the hadith which is authentic, narrated by Bukhari and others, reported by Bukhari and others, the hadith says that Rasulullah tells us that there is no deed rewarded better with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the deeds that are performed in these 10 days of the Hijjah. They asked him, Ya Rasulullah, even jihad in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala outside of these days? He said, yes, except the person who goes to stand up for justice, to defend his faith, to defend their faith and honor, and comes meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with nothing. Goes with their wealth, loses their life and their wealth. Now my brothers and my sisters, how did the companions deal with these 10 beautiful days of the Hijjah? What did they do? How did they behave? Ibn Abbas, it was known about him that the days of the Hijjah, whenever he was not going for Hajj, which is the case for most of the Ummah, you know, many of us were scheduled to go for Hajj, but we're not able to go this year, subhanAllah, because of the situation. And who would have imagined and who would have expected? You know, I remember standing on Arafah last year, making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He gives me the opportunity to come back. And I remember receiving the message that inshallah, most likely, you'll be coming back from the embassy. Now, coming with the subhanAllah message, I was very excited and imagine, inshallah, perhaps, almost, there's no way, inshallah, that things are going to go, except inshallah, for me to come to Hajj. But look at what happened, subhanAllah. But it's a reminder to be humble, it's a reminder that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in charge, it's a reminder that His will supersedes all other wills. But going back to Ibn Abbas, what would he do in these days? Just like Rasulullah sallallahu he would fast the nine days of the Hijjah. And he would spend the time reciting Qur'an, doing dhikr, especially tahleel, tahmeed, la ilaha illallah, alhamdulillah, and takbir, Allahu Akbar. Constant istighfar, constant istighfar. When he would get up before he would go to sleep, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. And when he was asked, why are you doing this? I saw Rasulullah doing the same in these days. So constant dhikr, constant istighfar, constant recitation of the Quran. Ibn Umar would go out and he would be spending his nights helping those who are poor break their fast, feeding others, spending from his wealth, Citing the ayah, لَن تَنَالُ الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ And it was known about Abdullah ibn Mas'ud that during this time, he would completely block off his schedule. So he wouldn't be spending as much time with people. He would put business aside, get rid of all of his business and focuses. 
all of that. He will make sure he gets it done beforehand and puts it off till after Eid. And these days he would focus solely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in these days, there's a beautiful day and that is the day of Arafah. So if you're not able to spend all of those days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing those things, at least dedicate the day of Arafah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fast the day of Arafah. The reward of which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala erases your deeds, negative deeds, your sins, for the entire year before and entire year to come. Imagine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the opportunity to start with Him with a clean slate. So if you're busy and you're not able to do all of those great things of dhikr, ibadah, Quran, recitation, closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at least, at least do those things on the day of Arafah. One day of the year. The best day of the year. And among the things that of course specific to these beautiful days is the sacrifice. To relive the legacy of Ibrahim. To relive the legacy of sacrifice, submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To reconnect with the story of submission. إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ And this is a sunnah that is neglected by many of us. So on your way out, we have today, you know, Islamic Relief is here to help with those who are not able to perform it themselves. So do get in touch with them. And please remember that the center, Isna itself, is not accepting Qurbani. We're not able to accommodate this year, so please keep that in mind. A man came to Abdullah ibn Umar, and he said to him, In these ten days, I see the companions really busying themselves with ibadah. If I am going to spend time with one person, to make an exception for that. You know, I'm fasting, I'm doing all these things. But I want to spend a little bit of time with someone. Who should I spend that time with? So he smiled and he remembered the hadith of Rasulullah When a man came to him and he said, Who is worthy of my companionship? Rasulullah said, Your mother, your mother, your mother, and if then, your father. And so he told him, spend this time with your mother, serve her, be there for her, eat with her, help her, even just sitting and listening empathetically with compassion and with love. You know, going back to the hadith about how these are the best days and no better deed can be done, subhanAllah, than these days, or no deed is rewarded better than in these days. What did Rasulullah say, except when they asked him, even jihad, he said, even jihad. But what's greater than even jihad? Ibn Umar says. What's greater than jihad? Remember the man who came to Rasulullah and said, Ya Rasulullah, I left everything behind me. I even left my own mother crying so I can come serve by your side and defend the borders of Islam and stand up for justice and help empower others to discover this message of Islam. Rasulullah said, go back and serve your mother and make her happy as you made her cry. That is your jihad. So imagine, even better than jihad for some people is to serve and to be there for their family, especially their mother. That is a form of jihad in itself. So in these beautiful days, connect with those that you've disconnected from. Rekindle that love, respect, and beautiful relationship with your mother, with your father. And remember that that is a reward associated with, there's a reward associated with the act, subhanAllah, that you cannot imagine. Remember the words of Ibn Abbas when he said, when someone's parents, especially the mother, passes away, an angel calls out and says, one of the doors of Jannah that has been opened for you is now closed and work and work hard and hustle 
For before this day, you were being rewarded through the du'as and the love of your parents and now you're on your own. Don't forget that. And if they have passed on and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted them in His mercy, make dua for them in these beautiful days. As you're reading Quran, as you're reading from the Mus'haf, make dua for them. As you're fasting and breaking your fast before Maghrib, make dua for them. Rabbi Rahmanuma, kema Rabbayani Sagira. Donate on their behalf, build wells on their behalf, do something on their behalf, share a legacy, knowledge that they've left behind. Feed people, saying, Ya Allah, just as you've given me beautiful parents that taught me all of these beautiful things, I'm doing it as a continuation of their legacy in your name and in your honor, Ya Rabbil Alameen. But my brothers and my sisters, keeping it very short today, we are in the best of days. The best of days. Don't let them go to waste. Connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And know that some of the scholars wrote about those whose lives were changed in these 10 days. Mentioning among them Abdullah ibn Mubarak and Sufyan ibn Uyayna, whose du'as shifted and transformed their lives in these days. The beautiful Day of Arafah specifically. Imagine when the very few Muslims that are selected this year to be there in Hajj, gathering on Arafah, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. On behalf of the rest of us, we join through our fasting and our dua. Also from afar, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept. And asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us that guidance and clarity. But know that during these days, the 10 days of the Hijjah, there's transformation that is awaiting. There is rahmah from Allah that will descend. There is guidance and clarity waiting to be gifted for those who search for it and for those who ask for it. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم لساء المسلمين الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على المصطفى اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك اللهم لنا في ما عطيت اللهم اهدنا وهديبنا وجعلنا مهتدين اللهم بارك لنا وفينا وعلينا وجعلنا مباركين اللهم قبلنا وتقبل منا وجعلنا مقبولين اللهم هات نفوسنا تقواها وزكيها أنت خير من زكاها أنت ولي ومولا يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلوبنا ونور صدورنا وجلاء أحزاننا وذهاب همومنا وغمومنا اللهم ذكرنا من القرآن ما نسينا وعلمنا من القرآن ما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوة القرآن آناء الليل وطراف النهار على الوجه الذي يرضيك عنا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا أبدا ما أبقيتنا وأحيتنا اللهم اشف صدور قوم المؤمنين اللهم انصر المصطعفين المسلمين في كل مكان يا رب العالمين اللهم انصر المصطعفين في كل مكان يا رب العالمين اللهم وحد صفوفنا وحق دماءنا واشف مرضانا وداوي جرحانا وعاف مبتلانا يا رب العالمين اللهم استر عيوبنا وآمنا في أوطاننا واحفظ بلاد المسلمين عن اليمائي والشمائل يا رب العالمين اللهم احق دماءنا يا رب العالمين اللهم وحد صفوفنا واشرح لنا صدورنا وأسر لنا أمورنا وباعد بيننا وبين خطايانا يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعل آخر كلامنا في الدنيا لا إله إلا الله محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم رسول الله واجعل آخر دعاءنا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم ارحم والدينا كما ربونا صغارا اللهم اغفر لهم يا رب العالمين اللهم اشف صدور قوم المسلمين واشف مرضى المسلمين يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر لموت المسلمين الذين شهدوا لك بالوحدانية ولنبيك بالرسالة وماتوا على ذلك اللهم اغفر لهم ارحمهم وعافي معفو عنهم وسع مدخلهم ونقهم ونقنا من الذنوب والخطايا كما ينقى الثوب الأبيض من الدنس وحن اللهم برحمتك الواسعة إذا أصلنا إلى ما صاروا إليه تحت الجناد والتراب وحدنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اللهم اهدي شباب المسلمين اللهم اهدي شبابنا يا رب العالمين اللهم اهدي شبابنا يا رب العالمين ورجالنا وإمتنا وضف لوالدينا يا رب العالمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وإنها عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتاب المنقودة